Hello guys, my name is Ajaya Jelati Mutayo, I'm from Nigeria. I'm going to be the one taking you biochemistry via this YouTube channel. I love teaching and I'm so passionate about teaching biochemistry. And every lecture you're going to be watching here is going to be a wonderful one. So just sit down and learn. But very importantly, ensure you subscribe and you hit the notification button so as to get notification on every lecture video that will be sent here. Thank you. Good day. Good day everyone. You're welcome to class. Welcome to class. This class is about introductory biochemistry one and today we're going to be considering a topic on the introduction and the general overview of what biochemistry is all about. Now, at first, it's very important we clear this misconception about what biochemistry is all about. You know, a lot of people feel biochemistry is simply or they feel biochemistry is all about the amalgamation of both biology and chemistry, now, that would be a very wrong assumption. Now, however, we are not really now the fact that biochemistry has a relationship with chemistry and the same with biology. But then, biochemistry is not just the combination of both biology and chemistry. You know, it's wrong to feel or believe that biochemistry is just the combination of biology and chemistry. However, biochemistry studies life too, but studies life at the chemical reacting level and that's why we simply put biochemistry as the chemistry of life now come to think of it biochemistry is not the only branch of science that studies life for example anatomy also studies life but anatomy studies the internal working activity of life that is anatomy studies the internal working activity of living things now physiology also studies life now on its own physiology is a branch of biology that studies the normal functions of living things and their parts now biology itself also studies life biology study is even the study of life on its own now come to think about it then what the biochemistry study about life now biochemistry studies the chemistry of life that is Biochemistry studies the chemical reactions that occur in living organisms which make life possible. Now, taking a look at that definition, that's enough to let you know that there are some certain chemical reactions that occur in living things that made life possible. Of course, when we talk about living things here, we're referring to plants and animals. And of course, for us to refer anything as a living thing it has to possess some certain characteristics if you remember your own level biology or your college biology you will have been taught characteristics of living thing where we talk about movement we talk about respiration we talked about nutrition we talk about irritability that is ability to respond to stimuli we, we talked about growth we talk about excretion we talk about reproduction, you know, we, we also talked about competition, we talked about adaptation, we talked about death. Now, all of these are characteristics of living thing. So if we, we actually refer something as a living thing, you know, such must possess these characteristics of living thing. Now, the question is, what do biochemistry come to offer? What biochemistry comes to offer is to give us an understanding about the various chemical reactions that occur in living things that actually make life possible. Now, taking a look, you see, biochemistry, just like we've explained, is the chemical study of the chemical basis of life. Now, and we've explained before now that biochemistry studies the chemical reactions of living things. Now, but more simply, we can define biochemistry as the study of the chemical substances and processes which occur in living cells and tissues. Now, when we talk about the cell, what I'm talking about? Now, in the organization of life in our own level biology or in our college biology, we were taught that cells 
is the basic structural and functional unit of life. That is, cell is the basic structural and functional unit of living things. Now, that's to let you know that without the cell, living things cannot come to place. Now, if the cell is the basic structural and functional unit of living thing, that means the cell comes together to form what we call the tissue. If you remember your organization of life in college biology, the cell comes together to form the tissue. The tissue comes together to form the organs. The organs come together to form the system. And the system, for example, comes together to form the whole um, organism. For example, in human being now, we have a whole lot of organs, we have billions of cells, a whole lot of tissues. Now, these cells come together to form tissue. This tissue comes together to form various organs in the body system. Now, these organs in the body system come together to form this. This organ in the body system comes together to form systems itself, such as the digestive system, the productive system, you know, a lot of them. Now, this system in turn comes together to form the whole human body, being a female or a male, or either an amaphrodite. Now, when we talk about cells now, the cells are basic structural and functional units of living things, which I've explained before that, which means that without the cell, living thing or life cannot come to place. But it will interest you to know that without atom, the cell itself cannot come to place. Now, let's look at the biochemistry of this. If without the cell, life cannot come to place, and then without atom, cell cannot come to place. Now, there's a straight line to show that without the atom, there will be no cell. So that's why in biochemistry, we are so much interested in studying life at the atomic and molecular level. Now, let's quickly have a quick recall on some of these things. Now, referring to an atom, we are referring to the smallest unit of a matter that can retain all the chemical properties of an element. You know, remember what the matter is from our chemistry, we define a matter as any substance that has weight and can occupy a space. Of course, talking about matter, matters are basically composed of atoms. Not only that, you know, the word atom should be something we are so familiar with right from our chemistry. Now, you know, in chemistry we have different elements on the periodic table. And these elements are majorly, or they are basically composed of various atoms. For example, when you see oxygen on the periodic table, it's made up of oxygen atom. When you see chlorine on the periodic table, it's made up of a chlorine atom. When you see magnesium, it's made up of a magnesium atom, and so on and so forth. Now, not only that, when we talk about molecules now, we are talking about groups of atoms bonded together representing the smallest fundamental unit of a chemical compound that can take part in a chemical reaction. Now, molecules are formed via combination of two or more atoms. For example, when you have two oxygen atoms coming together, they form what we call the oxygen molecule. Now, when you have three oxygen atoms coming together, they form what we call the ozone. You know, you have heard of the ozone layer in the sky that prevents uh, us from the ultraviolet ray of the sun. Now, we have a whole lot of molecules and it takes an atom to form a molecule to be able to participate in a chemical reaction. Now, that is for chlorine to be able to participate in a chemical reaction, you know, it's very important it's in a molecular form. Now, all of these things are basic chemistry that we must understand for appropriate understanding of what biochemistry is all about. Now, not only that, we'll talk about macromolecules now. Macromolecules are very large molecules and they are commonly composed of polymerization of smaller subunits. 
called monoma. Now, when we talk about macromolecules, basically, you know, most of the biomolecules found in the body, the lipids, the vic acid, carbohydrate, and proteins, are basically macromolecules. You know, these molecules are large. From the word macro, the word macro signifies large molecules. Now, the question is, how are these large molecules formed? That's what we are trying to explain to you here, that these large molecules are formed via combination of small molecules known as monomers. Now, for example, when we have a macromolecule like protein, protein does not just come to place automatically. Now, it comes to place via the combination of various small molecules known as amino acids. Now, this amino acid comes together one after the other and they are bounded by a peptide bond. Now, after coming together of a whole lot of amino acid bonded together by a peptide form bond, then it forms what we call a macromolecule known as the protein. Now, the formation of these various amino acids or the formation of coming or the formation of different amino acids, I mean the coming together of different amino acids to form a large macromolecule known as protein is known as polymerization. In other words, we are talking about the fact that polymerization involves the coming together of smaller molecules to form a larger molecule. Now, which means that without polymerization, macromolecule cannot be formed. And that's why we say macromolecules are large molecules commonly composed of polymerization of smaller subunits of monomer. You know, these smaller molecule coming together to form this larger molecule are known as monomer. For example, considering the example I gave as touching protein and the amino acid, the amino acid are the one that form the protein. That means amino acid are known as the monomers, while the protein are known as the polymer or macromolecule. Also in terms of carbohydrate, glucose comes together to form what we call glycogen, which is a macromolecular form of carbohydrate. Now these glucose in this sense are the monomers, while this glycogen, which are the macromolecular um, class of carbohydrate, we have uh, what the macromolecule, the polymers, or the large molecule. Now not only that, we also have what we call the cell organelles. You know, the cell organelles are specialized subunits, usually within a cell that has specific function. Now, taking a look at the diagram before you is a diagram of an animal cell, and you can see various labels in there. You have the mitochondria, you have the nucleus, you have the vacuole, the cytoplasm, vesicle, lysosome, peroxome plasma membrane, ribosomes, and all of that. You know, all of these cell organelles are very important, such that the coming together of all of these cell organelles gave cell the ability to exert life. Now, for example, without the cell organelles, the cell cannot exert life. Now, the question is, these cell organelles are formed from atoms. Now, atoms come together to form molecules, Molecules come together to form macromolecules. Macromolecules come together to form these cell organelles. And these cell organelles come together to form what we call the cell. Either a plant cell or an animal cell. But here, the diagram before you is a diagram of an animal cell. Now, taking a look at all of these labels, these labels indicate the various cell organelles that are present in the cell. For example, we have the mitochondria. We, we call the mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell because there are a lot of metabolic activities that go on in the mitochondria. You know, we have the nucleus. The nucleus is always at the center of the cell and it contains more of the genetic materials or the genetic information activity of the cell. You know, we also have another um, cell organelle we call the ribosome. Now, the ribosome, we say the ribosome is the site of protein synthesis and so on and so forth. Now, not only that, I've been talking about the 
various terms and their meaning and giving brief explanation about them, it's very important we take a look at the various areas of specialization in chemistry. You know, biochemistry is so wide and we have a whole lot of areas of specialization as long as biochemistry exists. And you know, day by day, scientists continue to, you know, they continue to, to research more on more areas of specialities in biochemistry. You know, scientists begin to bring up more areas of specialities day by day. Now, for just for the sake of this class, we have a few areas of specialization here in biochemistry. You know, we have areas of specialization like enzymology, pharmaceutical biochemistry, protein chemistry, nutritional biochemistry, tissue biochemistry, space biochemistry, bioinformatics and computational biology, and so on and so forth. Now, for example, when you talk about enzymology and protein chemistry, now, no, these are areas of biochemistry that studies proteins, they study enzymes into details. When we have, when we talk about areas like molecular biology and biochemical genetics. Now, these are areas that studies gene transfer of genetic traits and every metabolic activity involved in gene transfer. Now, when we talk about areas such as biochemical pharmacology and areas such as pharmaceutical biochemistry, you know, alongside um, toxicology and xenobiochemistry. You know, this area studies the foreign substance that is drug that enters the body and um, how these foreign compounds that enter the body are being metabolized and you know how they are being excreted and their metabolism and their absorption alongside with other metabolic activities. Now when we have areas like uh, microbial biochemistry biotechnology you know these areas deal with how we use microorganisms to produce a lot of um, useful products to the body via the knowledge of biochemistry you know we have a whole lot of aspects in biochemistry and i'm so sure that probably in your institution you'll have seen one or two lecturers that specializes in one or two areas or will have met one or two people in scientific conferences who has one or two of these areas as their special study area now apart from that it's also very important we understand the fact that biochemistry involves the studies of biomolecules now when we talk about biomolecules from the word bio these are molecules that are found in living cells yeah Biomolecules are molecules that are found in living cells. They are not just found anywhere, but they are found in living cells. Now, for example, we talk about biomolecules. Biomolecules are carbon-containing compounds that make up various parts of living cells and carry out the chemical reaction that enable the cell to grow, maintain and reproduce itself, as well as use and store energy. Now, what I was trying to talk about here is that the various chemical reactions that we talked about that occur in the body are made possible via the bowel molecules. In other words, the bowel molecules are the ones that does this chemical reaction in the cell. Now, remember, we have four major bar molecules. We have the nucleic acid, we have the proteins, we have the carbohydrate, and the lipid. Now, that means these bar molecules we just mentioned are the ones that engage in the various chemical reactions that occur in the cell that make it possible for the cell to exert life. And that is why the chief goal of biochemistry or our major focus in biochemistry is to understand the structure and the behaviors of the various biomolecules found in the body. Now when you talk about these various biomolecules, they are made up of different atoms, they are made up of different molecules, hence they have different structures and different behaviors. So one of our major concern in biochemistry is to understand the structure and the behaviors of these biomolecules found in the body system. Now, as a matter of fact, there is no way the cell can maintain life or there's no way the cell can exert life if these biomolecules 
are not engaging in the various chemical reactions or biochemical activities that occur in the body system. Now, these biomolecules, just like I've said before now, are the ones that made it possible for the cell to exert life via the various chemical reaction that they participate in within the cell. Now, when this biomolecule undergo various chemical reaction, we call this process metabolism. Now, when biomolecules undergo various chemical reaction, these chemical reactions can occur in two ways. They can occur in form of anabolism, that is, in form of building up of substance, or catabolism, in form of breaking down of substances. Now, what do we mean by this? For example, when you have amino acids coming together, you know, amino acid and monomers, they are small molecules, now coming together to form a large molecule, such as protein, that gives an example of anabolism, because that is a building up process. Amino acid teaming up to form a protein is a building up of substance, you know, that's anabolism. Now, on, in other words, when you have glucose now coming together to form carbohydrates, you know, glucose are the monomeric units, that is, they are the small molecules that come together to form carbohydrates. Now, when you have glucose coming together now to form carbohydrate now, that is also a building up process. But when the body needs more glucose and the carbohydrates stored in the body begin to break down to form glucose, then that is an example of catabolism, that is breaking down of substance. Now let me quickly give you this example. Now when you take in a carbohydrate rich diet, now the food gets digested and glucose is supplied in the bloodstream. Now this glucose supplied in the bloodstream are carried by the blood and distributed to various parts of the body system. Now, the remaining part of this glucose, the excess glucose left in the bloodstream, you now come together to form what we call the glycogen. Now, this glycogen now, this glycogen are stored in the muscle and in the liver. Now, in times when you are fasting or you've not taken breakfast, and you need to, and you are involving yourself in one activity or the other. Now, what happens is that this glycogen stored in the liver and the muscle begin to break down to form glucose that can be utilized by the body. Now, this process of breaking down of this glycogen to form glucose is known as what catabolism that is breaking down. Why the building up of this glucose to form glycogen is a form of anabolism because that involves a building up of substances. So now, talking about the various biomolecules in the cell, you know, we, we talked about the fact that we have four major or four most important biomolecules in the cell, which are the nucleic acid, the proteins, the carbohydrates, and the lipids. Now, talking about the nucleic acid now, we are talking about biomolecules present in the cell that are responsible for storing and transferring of genetic information. Now, when we talk about the nucleic acid, one thing that should come to your subconscious memory as a student is the DNA and the RNA. Now, from our biology, we know that the DNA is known as the deoxyribonucleic acid, while the RNA is known as the ribonucleic acid. Now, for example, when you take a look at the DNA, the structure of the DNA is it's a double helical molecule. You know, it contains nitrogenous bases, it contains a whole lot of other components that makes it what it is and its ability to be able to store and transfer genetic information. Now when we talk about the storing and transferring of genetic information, one thing that should come to your subconscious memory as a student is gene. Of course when we talk about gene, we are talking about hereditable traits transferred from an older organism or from a parent to offspring. Now, when we talk about the gene, the gene is found on the DNA. So the, the DNA helps to store and transfer genes from an older organism to a younger organism or from a parent to offspring. Now, talking about the nucleic acid, now, this is enough reason to let you know 
that without the nucleic acid present in the cell, there will be no way genetic information will be transferred from a parent to offspring. Now, for example, you will have seen someone who resemble his or father. You will have seen a grandson who resemble his granddad. Now, you will have seen a daughter who resemble his mom. Now, for all of this resemblance to occur, it involves transfer of genetic traits from the mother to the daughter, or from the father to the son, or from the grandfather to the grandson. Now, these things do not just occur automatically, they occur via the availability of nucleic acids present in the cell. Now, this nucleic acid, especially the DNA, is so important for transferring of traits from an older organism to, an, to a younger organism. Now, when we talk about the RNA, now, dribonitic acid is basically found in viruses. Now, talking about the RNA in viruses, you know, viruses, you know, we have a lot of viruses, viruses such as bacteriophage. Now, they help to transfer some particular traits in molecular biology. Now, if, if you've taken a look at molecular biology very well, now, viruses such as bacteriophage help to transfer some traits. You know, they serve as vector to carry some certain traits, or they serve as transport machine to transfer some certain traits from one organism to another. So, nucleic acid generally are so important when it comes to transferring and storing of genetic information or genetic traits. Now, another very important biomolecule in the cell are proteins. And when we talk about proteins here, you know, we said proteins are large molecules or we said they, they are bow molecules, you know, they are macro molecules. And we made mention of the fact that they have their monomeric units as amino acid, that is amino acid comes together to form the large molecule or the bar molecule called proteins. Now, proteins are of serious interest when it comes to living organism or when it comes to the cell. Now, there's this ideology in biochemistry that all enzymes are what proteins. Now, a very important examples of proteins in the body are enzymes. Now, apart from the enzyme, we also have the hormones. We have the various receptors in the body via which signals are being transferred in the body system. All of these molecules are made up of proteins. For example, now, when you take a carbohydrate-rich diet, the digestion of the carbohydrate starts from the mouth via a particular enzyme which is also a protein known as starlin. Now this starlin is an enzyme that breaks down carbohydrate in the mouth. You know, it's present in the salivary gland. It breaks down carbohydrate in the mouth. This enzyme starlin is a protein. Now, when this carbohydrate begins to digest, some other enzymes act on this carbohydrate too. You know, we have alpha amylase and alpha glucosidase. All of these alpha amylase and alpha are also what their enzymes and they are as well proteins. So, proteins are important class of molecules in the cell. Of course, these proteins, for example, enzymes now, they are catalysts. They help to speed up the rate of breakdown of substances within the body system, which is in turn Catabolism, you remember. Now, proteins also aid the build up of a lot of substances in the body. You know, enzymes, for example, which are proteins, aid the build up of a lot of substances in the body, which is also in turn anabolism. For example, we have a lot of molecules in the body we call receptors. Now, within the body system, there are always transfer of signals from one part of the body system to another. For example, when you feel a pain, there is a signal that is sent from that part of the body to the brain that made you feel that pain. Now, for you to be able to feel a pain in your body, or for you to be able to feel a particular sensation in your body, that means there have been sent of signal via receptors in the body system and these receptors are also proteins of course 
Another set of proteins that are very important in the cell or the body system are hormones. We have a lot of hormones. For example, we have the reproductive hormone, we have the progesterone in women, we have oxytocin, we have testosterone in men, and so on and so forth. So, the importance of macromolecules such as protein cannot be undermined when we talk about the studies of macromolecules or biomolecules in the cell. However, we are still going to talk extensively on proteins and each of these biomolecules in a later video. So stick to this channel to learn more. Now, another set of biomolecules important in the body system are the carbohydrates. Now, we'll talk about carbohydrates. Said carbohydrates are the uh, biomolecules that contain or they are made up of basically carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And carbohydrates are the basic fuel molecule of the cell. Now, we say carbohydrates are the basic cell molecule. Basic fuel molecule of the cell, we are saying that because the monomeric unit of carbohydrate, which are glucose, they are broken down via a set of reactions in the body known as glycolysis to produce what we call ATP, that is the adenosine triphosphate, which the body uses for various metabolic activities. And that's why we say the cell breaks down carbohydrate to need chemical energy as a raw material to produce other molecules. Now, all the building up and breaking down the metabolism and the various activities performed by other biomolecules in the body system are being fueled by carbohydrates. So, when we talk about carbohydrates, one thing that should come to your memory is glucose. Glucose is the simplest and the most common type or example of carbohydrate we have around. And, you know, carbohydrates are very important. For, that's why in all level biology or in our college biology we're told that carbohydrate produces energy for the body activity they are one of the most important biomolecules in the body not only that uh, carbohydrates being a biomolecule they, they have um, a kind of reaction with some other biomolecules to form uh, some other very important to perform some other very important functions in the cell. For example, we have glycogen reacting together with lipid to form what we call the glycolipids, which perform one or two functions in the body system. So the importance of carbohydrate being a macro molecule in the body cannot be undermined. Now, the question is, how are these carbohydrates being produced in the body system? Or how are these carbohydrates being supplied? to living organisms or to humans for example or to animals now green plants now and some bacteria use a process known as photosynthesis to produce simple carbohydrates from carbon dioxide water and sunlight and animals in turn get their food from these green plants now how do we talk about now, when we talk about green plants now, or these bacteria, they have what we call the chlorophyll. Now, the chlorophyll of green plants is being used by the green plant to tap sunlight. Now, after these green plants or some of these bacteria use their chlorophyll to tap sunlight, then they use this sunlight in turn to produce carbohydrates using carbon dioxide and water now from the word photosynthesis is enough to let you see photo that is light the synthesis of carbohydrates from sunlight water and carbon dioxide so when we talk about photosynthesis so photosynthesis is a process by which green plants produce carbohydrates or sugar from carbon dioxide water and sunlight and the question is if green plant produces carbohydrate from carbon dioxide water and sunlight by the process known as photosynthesis then how do animals obtain their own carbohydrates animals human beings or other animals obtain their carbohydrate substance from green plants you think they are, you know all the food we eat beans rice garbage Cucumber and all of them are all examples 
or food we get from plants. And this plant produces this food via the process known as photosynthesis. Now, another very important macromolecule we have to talk about is the lipids. Now, we'll talk about the lipids. So lipids are fatty substances that play varieties of roles in the cell. Now, lipids, as important as they are, their monomeric units are fatty acids. Now, what I'm trying to say about it is that lipids being a macromolecule, fatty acid comes together as small molecules or monomers to form this big macromolecule or biomolecule known as lipids. Now, the question is what are the importance of lipids in the body? What are the usefulness of lipids as biomolecule? Now, one of the major usefulness of lipids as biomolecule is that they are stored as high energy fuel. You know, not only carbohydrate produces fuel for the body metabolic activity. Now, lipid also produce fuel for the body metabolic activities too. Not only that, you know, we have a lot of lipids. For example, we have phospholipids, fingolipid, and all of these lipids. You know, many of these lipids are formed in the various cell membrane. You know, we said the body contains billions of cells and each cell in the body contains what we call the cell membrane. Now, these cell membranes are made up of lipids. So that's why we call them membrane bilayer. So they are made, these membrane bilayers are made up of lipids and proteins, basically. So you can see another synonymous agreement between lipids and protein. So the cell membrane, you know, what the cell membrane does in the cell is to is to make the cell semi-permeable. That is, it guides what comes in and goes out of the cell. So that means, if not for the lipids present in the cell membrane of each cell, you know, a lot of cell will have died or a lot of cell will have stopped functioning in the body system. You know, cell membrane or this by lipid layer membrane of the cell, called the cell membrane, you know, it helps to regulate a, a form of homostasis to guide what enters or goes out of the cell and hence keep the cell functioning in an appropriate way. So, the role of lipids cannot be talked with when it comes to the study of bowel molecules. Now, not only that, we also like to talk about a very important question, like what are biochemists interested in? You know, when we talk about living organisms, we talk about biochemistry studying the various chemical reactions occurring in living cells, the various chemical reactions occurring in living organisms. Now the question is, what are the various chemical reactions that occur in living organisms that biochemists study? What are those things in living organisms that are of interest to biochemists? Now, one of them is that biochemists study the chemical transformations occurring in living organisms. That is, the detection of chemical intermediate and end product of metabolic transformation. Now, what I would try to talk about here is that every of the chemical reactions that occur in the body of three of the chemical reactions that occur in the body produce a particular end product now for example in our chemistry when two compounds come together for example when sodium and chlorine come together it form what we call sodium chloride that's the end product now the same thing occur when these bar molecules in the body undergo some certain chemical reactions of course they produce some End product which we either call chemical intermediate or product of metabolic transformation. So we talk about chemical transformations or metabolic transformation in the body system. We're talking about the various chemical reactions that occur within the cell via the aid of these biomolecules. Now another thing that biochemists study is the study of enzymes. You know. Enzymes are important in the body such that they speed up the rate of biochemical reactions in the body. Now, for
for various metabolism that is anabolism and catabolism to occur within the body system now the role of enzyme cannot be overemphasized because enzymes speed up the rate of all of these reactions for example now in the study of carbohydrate or in the study of carbohydrate digestion alpha amylase breaks down polysaccharides into disaccharides so without alpha amylase breaking down polysaccharides to disaccharides you know the breakdown of polysaccharides will have been very smooth in the body system and that will have caused a loss of havoc to the body now in turn this enzyme called alpha glucosidase breaks down disaccharides into monosaccharides to be used up by the body system so the role of enzyme in the body are very important because they are responsible for metabolic conversions you know conversions of one substance to another within the body system and that thing that biochemists study the biochemists study the mechanism by which living organism controls thousands of chemical reactions and transformation that occur in the cell of course this is very synonymous to our point one and two if living organisms are going to study if living organisms are going to control the various chemical reaction and transformation that occur in the body system the role of enzyme are very important alongside the end product of such chemical reactions occurring in the body system at that particular time now another thing biochemistry study is the d nucleic acid of course when we're talking about the nucleic acid at that time i spoke about the d nucleic acid no the nucleic acid is very important such that you know it carries the gene it carries genetic information you know transfer genetic information from parents to offspring and by means the osirabonic acid dna controls development and the functional metabolism of a lot of cell activities and that in biochemistry study are uh, the various aspects of nutrition and dietary requirements you know there's this aspect of biochemistry there's this feed or area specialization in biochemistry called the food biochemistry or nutritional biochemistry now when we talk about this feed of biochemistry it goes detailed into the study of nutrition and dietary requirement you know there is a dietary requirement for different stage or for different age of living organism for example dietary requirement for babies are different from that of adults they are different from that of teens or teenagers at that level so nutrition and dietary requirement are one of those things that biochemists are so interested in studying not only that biochemists are also interested in the study of man's response to various environmental factors such as atmospheric pollution radiation drugs and smoking of course if you remember while we're talking about the various areas specialization in biochemistry i made mention of xenobiotics or xenobiochemistry you know xenobiochemistry studies the various foreign compounds coming to the body system and how they affect the body system how they have been metabolized how they have been excreted and all of that so one of those things that biochemists are interested in studying are the various environmental factors such as atmospheric pollution you know how pollution affect the body how radiation you know chemotherapy affect the body system in one way or the other how drugs or smoking affects the body system all of these are what are of interest to biochemists and all of these are what we study now another thing that we study is that we study the fundamental changes that occur at the molecular level as a result of diseases for example when there's a disease condition in a body system there's always a change at the molecular level of the body you know when, when you take a deep study at the cell or at the molecules when there's a disease condition in the body there's always a change now that's why giving an example here there's a biochemical difference between the normal tissue and cancerous tissue now this biochemical difference between normal tissues and cancerous tissue or disease tissue or disease cell can only be made known when we take a deep study of these tissues or cells or uh, we'll take a deep study of 
this tissue and this cell at the molecular level. Now, another thing we study in biochemistry, which is of great importance to us, is also the study of agents that can pretend, that can prevent or cure ill health. For example, we have these substances we derive from plants that we call phytochemicals, from the word phyto. When you hear the word phyto, we are referring to plants. So when we talk about phytochemicals, we are talking about chemicals derived from plants. Now these phytochemicals, we get them from plants. Example, we have alkaloid, we have saponin, we have a whole lot of them. Now these phytochemicals we derive from plants have been administered to cure health. For example, a lot of researches has shown that there is a phytochemical called saponin that can manage diabetes effectively. Now, these are various um, areas of interest that biochemists does their research or you know they are of, of a serious interest in at one point or the other. Now let's take a look at the various applications of biochemistry. You know the various applications of biochemistry are very wide but we are just giving a short you know just few of them here in this lesson. Now when I talk about various applications of biochemistry Number one is that we found biochemistry importance for the treatment of a lot of metabolic disorders. Now when we talk about metabolic disorder, we are talking about disorder that occur due to inappropriate catabolism or anabolism in the cell. You know, metabolism involves both anabolism and catabolism. So when the metabolic activity they are supposed to occur in the body are not occurring in the appropriate way they should occur then it causes what we call metabolic disorder so biochemistry you know biochemistry we we are uh, we take metabolism anabolism and catabolism as a very important biochemical process in the body system so the treatment of metabolic disorder are one of the applications of biochemistry. For example, when we talk about metabolic disorder that occur in human body, we have diabetes, we have hypertension, we have cancer, a whole lot of them. So biochemists three are the found to be applied in the treatment or knowledge of biochemistry are found to be applied in the treatment of some of these or all of these metabolic disorders. Under application of biochemistry is the study of antibiotics to combat bacteria. Of course, we, we, we talk under 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 microbial biochemistry. We talk about you know getting antibiotics to treat a lot of uh, bacteria infections and all of that. You know, another application of biochemistry is that biochemistry will be found. The ordinary of biochemistry will be found useful in boosting industrial and agricultural productivity. You know. We have a whole lot of aspects of biochemistry, just like we said. Now, one of them is industrial biochemistry. Now, via the knowledge of industrial biochemistry, it has been applied to industrial and agricultural productivity all around the world. Now, another application of biochemistry are the use of biochemical techniques to be used in genetic engineering. You know, the field of molecular biology and biochemical genetics aid the use of different biochemical techniques to be used in genetic engineering. When we talk about genetic engineering, we are talking about, you know, transforming a particular gene to perform better or lower, depending on how you want your experiment to go. Now, for the sake of this class, we have quiz here. You know, you need to answer this quiz just to actually make you know or make you see if you actually understood what we've done so far. So I will advise that you go through this quiz, answer them and see how much you can you, you can actually do justice to them. You know, of course when you go through the questions, the questions are quite simple and I bet you we have dealt with all the questions here pertaining to this topic so go to them and um, give them an answer give them a trial and you know you will actually enjoy them now i would quickly like to join you to subscribe and click the notification button 
of this YouTube channel so that you will get notified when we drop new videos. Now, you can as well send in your questions and suggestions to this email you are taking a look at or call this number. So, try to subscribe and click the notification button of this YouTube channel and as well send in your questions and suggestions to this email, you know, betteledufem at gmail.com or call this number you are seeing on your screen. So, our next class, we are going to be taking a look at cell into a deep detail of it. Till then, stay safe.